It's hard to breathe, but that's alright. Hush. Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to a new video. Now, in this one, we're going to be going over a gold recap. It was a huge trade, one of my biggest trades. Um, but yeah, it was just a crazy trade. Um, and I thought I'd recap it. And um, there was someone else as well who caught this uh, ghost, I believe it was. Um, which is, you know, crazy. And at the time of this as well, it was around um, the fundamentals. So there's been, you know, news released. Um, but you know, honestly, you know, price movements aren't random. I know there's news and stuff like that, but it's always doing something, right? So, um, one of the entries was based on, you know, the white cough and stuff like that. Um, but that's something for a different course. I won't go into that today. Um, but as you can see, price is sort of trading between this, you know, sort of range. Um, we had this resistance, you know, resistance be formed, tapped into again. So it's just a trading between this range. And in terms of when we implement, you know. Wyckoff, we know that we have a previous markup, distribution, and a potential markdown. So we was obviously, you know, we could have seen this as, you know, prices had a previous markup starting to range. So we could expect further downward movement. Now, obviously, I'm expecting a bit more of a spike up to the upside, but I thought, why not take that risk? Uh, as I've seen a nice, you know, potential entry here, because as you can see, price came up, break of structure, had a little range, boom. So I just pretty much drew up that range. You know, from this high to this low, because that's within the range. And I was looking for a trade anywhere within this range. I was looking for that smaller time frame, blah, 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 right? Anyways, I went on to the one minute time frame. found a valid order block up here. Um, You know, the most extreme in price. Um, as we were trading, obviously, off this sort of resistance, right? Um, so we wanted it quite close to this resistance as extra confirmation. Um, But yeah, so if we just go to the one hour time frame, you can see here now that, you know, we have this sort of demand zone. So I was looking to target around there. I targeted equilibrium um, and it's a nice trade. As we previously tapped into this and this has sort of failed, you know, sort of broken below. We had a slight closure below and um, then price started, you know, came back out. So it looked like a classic manipulation, right? So took out the highs, took out the lows. Um, the price started ranging and then as the London session kicked in, what happened is that price, you know, pushed price up because it was previously ranging. If you look here, right? ranging then as you know around seven o'clock you had a little bit more arrangement we had that you know buyer trap so people who were looking to sell or um seller trap sorry you had you know had that you know pretty much bearish sweep right um so we had the liquidity suit to the downside and then you know mitigating an order block over here in which retailers wouldn't have saw that as an order block they would have looked to sell on a breakout unfortunately price closed back in and started you know making these new highs now between 12 and 2 o'clock is obviously our New York reversal. So anywhere anywhere between that time, I was looking for a nice trade um, to catch back to the downside. So that was an extra confluence. And obviously we tap into this range created supply zone, in which it was refined to an order block up, you know, up here. So if you wanted to take um, you know, a risk entry alone based off that, then that would have been a huge trade. You know, Oh, stops would have been above this wick. And then obviously we would have targeted down here. And that would have still been alone a huge, you know, big trade. But obviously me being me, I like to take the confirmation entries just to, you know, but, you know, I had time on the charts and it was just, you know, more safe, I, I suppose you could say, right? So, yeah, we got a lot of, um, you know, confluences here. Obviously, we drew up our classic premium discount thing, but we knew that we was already selling within this, you know, sort of premium zone. Again, as it's resistance, we wanted the most extreme in price. So this order block here would have been invalidated anyway. Also, we measured up momentum. Um, the, you know, as you can see, it's pretty pretty bearish compared to it was bullish. So again, all of you know confluences and all that, I think the sector was just lining up. And if you go down to the five minute time frame, to look back here, and at the time this is around fundamentals between twelve and two o'clock, in which we were looking for you know New York reversal. I believe there was another position on here somewhere. Um, as I, I shown you a scaling, but I'm not sure where it's gone. Um, but yeah, as you can see, price tapped into that very nicely. So if you did take a trade of that alone, then you know, well done. But if we just go to the one minute time frame, I'll just show you the valid entries. So okay, so what we could have done, we could have entered off here, right? I'll explain why in a minute. So that would have been stops above there, and also we entered off here as well because obviously it's mitigating this range created supply zone. All right, we could have took a trade off the equilibrium or the open, and probably would have been, you know, put into the trade within spread, you know, when you include spreads. Um, but the open was enough. Stops above here, and uh, it's a nice, you know, seven point two pip stop. 
and then obviously we're looking to target that higher time frame demand um but if we just drag this all the way down right so as you can see order block break or structure break or structure right so we've broken two structural uh, levels obviously you know, if you look at it in terms of momentum one two two candles one two three four blah 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 so on right so there's much more bearish momentum than there is bullish um as you can see again created another order block or this sort of you know range supply uh, range created supply zone the reason why i included this is because this wick high lined up with this wick high and this looked like a neutral candle so there wasn't really you know you couldn't class it as an order block but this was the last clear bullish candle before the down move so as you can see that created a bullet um you know sort of supply zone um, which we're looking to take a trade from and as you can see price broken structure to the downside and also a wick below here Obviously, that's I don't include it as my breaker structures, but for those of you that do, it would have been a class as a breaker structure. But I was happy with this one. I was, you know, I was believing in that short-term bearish, you know, strength. Um, well, you got bearish US dollar strength. Um, and as you can see, price tapped into the open, so that would have been your scaling, and that trade would have been 41.16 alone, you know, percent. And if we just drag this down to the bottom, to where this other price was, right, as you can see, 59.06 at 41 right so that is one hell of a trade so that alone was crazy trade you know 100 hour trade from literally two trades using order blocks and mitigations and high time frame point of interest um, and that's the power behind you know these confirmation entries on a small time frame um, but yeah it was a nice trade I would go back and show you the order block it was over here it was, it was over there the price tapped into it came back down tapped into that one tapped into this one uh, came back up to this one and left an order block up here as well. So we just left this as our resistance. Of course, we wanted the most extreme in price, and this is the smaller time frame resistance. So it made sense to just look for entry drawn there. Um, I thought it was there to be honest. I don't know why it's up there. Probably was there when I entered the trade. Um, but either all, you know, it was a very nice trade. Really can't complain with it. Um, but you know, 100 hour trades, and how long did that take? Because this was obviously a time around fundamentals. So there was a lot of volatility. And this is the tip to trading for uh, fundamentals. If you see price set on, you know, an order block or a sort of valid supply and demand zone, and the fundamentals come out, if you want to take that little risk, go for it. Um, because usually the time these price movements aren't, you know, they're not they're not random. They t they tap into these things, right? So as you can see, price came back down, tapped into this within, um, obviously, well, the next day, I believe. Where's my indicator? Yeah, so within the space of literally exactly one day, so 24 hours, you had made 100% return on your trade. So if you're you know, ballsy enough to, for example, have that on an FTMO account, 1% risk, 100k, whatever, that would be over 100k, or, or 100k, right, which is just well, crazy. You know, people have made that because one guy the other month made 73k, um, and that was off the 100k split, I believe. So, you know, that was, you know, and it's achievable, it's possible. Um... And you know when people say I'll oh, be realistic, that's the worst advice you could ever receive. A receive. So you know the next time you know when you have a funded account, aim for these trades. You know why not? Who's telling you not? You know, but obviously at the you know the beginning of all of that, um, you know at the beginning of your trading journey, we won't be doing all that. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. And that was a gold hundred dollar trade.